So suppose you have this string, right? This simple sentence says apples are good for your health. They probably are. And you want to find a certain word inside this string. How would you do it? Well, let's first define our word. So say here, char to find equals, let's say good. We want to find the word good inside our string. What function do you have to use to actually find it? Well, inside the string.h header, which you're going to have to include, there is a function called str str. And this function, all it does is basically tell you whether or not a string is found inside another string. So let's try to use it. So uh, the first parameter is the actual full sentence, right? So we're going to have to pass in here str, which is this guy. And I'm going to pass in as a second parameter our uh, smaller string that we want to find inside, inside our, our str. And if you actually use the return value of this function in an if statement, something like this, and sort of print, I just print f a result. So if this returns a value that is not zero, basically, print f, the word has been found. And a backslash n here. And for else, I'm going to just copy and paste this and say the word has not been found. All right. If I try to run this, you'll notice it, it's going to say the word has been found. So that's correct because our word good has been found in here in our larger sentence. If I say, for example, um, let's say bad instead, a word that we don't find inside our string, if we try to run it again, you'll notice it's going to say the word has not been found. So it seems to work. That's, that's perfect. That's nice. And now this is where most people sort of stop. And they're like, okay, this works nice. We can go home. But we didn't talk about one crucial thing here. What does str str return? So that we can actually, so that it doesn't evaluate to zero and we execute this function if it's found and we execute this other function if it's not found. Why? Does that work? For that, we can take a look at the documentation. So if I open up the documentation here, as you can see, the return value or the return type of our function is a char pointer. And it so happens that this char pointer points to what? The first character of the found substring inside the string here, right? So this guy, Basically, the result of this, if this guy is good, for example, the result of this would be a pointer, not to the string here, but a pointer to the start of the substring that we're searching for. So basically an arrow right here that starts right around here and points to the rest of the string. We can take a look. We can actually uh, store this value. So we can say here, uh, char pointer uh, result equals this and what we can say is again use the result here in the if statement but what we can also do since we know uh, that this if is true if res is not zero so since it's not zero we know it's not null so we can print f this res so you can say print f percent s backslash n and res because percent s does take a char pointer as a parameter and we can take a look at all all those characters that it's pointing to and if we do that something interesting is going to happen as you can see we get the the sentence good for your health so we can notice here that this pointer this result actually does point to the beginning of the word good that we were searching for and if the substring is not found so for example if i say bad here um I can try to print it as well in the else block here. So if you try to run this, you'll notice that it says here null. That means that the pointer that we are trying to get a value from was actually null. So we didn't print really anything. Thus, if we use, for example, a percent %p here, remember percent %p sort of prints the value of the pointer in hexadecimal. That's basically what it does, since a uh, pointer is just an address. If you try to run this now, you'll notice I'm just going to get zeros. 
Right, so that's the null pointer. That signifies the fact that we haven't found a bad word inside our sentence. Okay. And this is why this condition works because, well, if we have found it, that means that this pointer is not null. It's, it's a value. I can actually prove that to you if I say percent %p here instead of percent %s. Right, it's going to print the same thing. And if I change this to good, so it is back, and I'm try to run it, you'll notice that it's a pretty big number there, but that's the address in memory for that, for exactly this place, right? So for the start of this string, this part of the string itself, okay? And we know for a fact that addresses are not gonna be zero. That means that if it was found, this if statement would not be getting a value that is zero, right? It would be different than zero, thus executing what's in the if block. Otherwise, if it wasn't found, that, that means that this guy is a zero, right? So it's going to execute the else block. This is why str str works inside the if statement. And this is why most other string related functions work like strcmp or strchr. And the next thing you can do, due to the fact that you're gonna get a pointer that points to part of this uh, whole string, is get a position at which this word has been found. So I can say here, the word has been found at position percent LLU. Well, to get a position, all we have to do is subtract pointers. If we subtract the result pointer from the beginning of the array, since the result pointer is always gonna be uh, higher in value than the beginning, we are basically gonna get this difference, which is the position from the beginning of the string. Okay, so if I say here, uh, res minus str and try to run this, you'll notice I'm going to get the word has been found at position 11. So that is, is that correct? Let's see. Uh, so that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And that is correct. So I hope this was useful. Now using this information, I would like you to try and create an algorithm that not only gets the first occurrence of uh, a word inside a sentence, but also gets the second occurrence and maybe the third, the fourth and so on, but start with the second and figure out how you can actually do it and maybe place that in a loop and I'm gonna find all the occurrences that way. All right, that's sort of a homework for you. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care.